And there it is. It's back to freaking normal. In this video, I'm going to be showing how I installed the VTT crank hub because it is something I could not find on YouTube, so I decided I'm going to go ahead and make a video. So why did I pick the VTT crank hub of all things? So VTT doesn't necessarily have the best reputation. A lot of my friends like to use the acronym Very Terrible Turbos. Nonetheless, I think it is really hard to mess up a piece like this. Not only that, the pinned crank hubs are significantly more expensive and they're kind of obnoxious to install. They have to be drilled into the crank perfectly. And I've just heard of too many incidences where things did not go right. So I gave VTT a chance and I tried this crank hub. Again, FCP Euro recommends it. And I do love FCP Euro. Now keep in mind, this is for the N54, but it is very similar to the N55 and S55 installation for the crank hub. Slight differences that you can find in the VTT instructions, which I'm gonna drop in the link in the description. But again, they're not that much different. This video is kind of just to get a really general idea of how this goes, considering there's no other video on YouTube at this time of installing this VTT crank hub. I mean, good thing I slipped my crank hub at this time, right? Right now I'm in the process of switching over to the VTT spline lock solution for the crank hub on the N54. Let's start with explaining this problem. What causes the timing to slip? We have the OEM crank hub right here with both sprockets on side. So this, is what does the oil pump timing and this is what does the camshaft timing. in a well-built car the this and this crank hub would be one piece maybe even pinned no here's what bmw decided to do they decided to have grip discs in between the sprockets a grip disc here a grip disc here which the oil pump sprocket actually comes installed with and one more grip disc right here I don't know if you can see right there. This spins, this stays with it. Everything is great. But what holds these two together? Like what makes this spin different from this? Not much. So what holds this in is a hundred Newton meters of torque plus 360 degrees. So that is tight. That is a lot of force that holds these two together. But when you put in a ton of torque, this slips and eventually will catch on again. And that's what happened to my motor right here. Luckily it didn't cause any damage and it's going to be reused and I'm gonna use the donor motor I've been posting about on Instagram to be built instead. But I'm gonna be installing this right here. This, along with that oil pump sprocket, this is a one piece solution. You can't separate these two. Look at and it will keep timing with the crankshaft and the camshaft. And to make sure it does so, it'll dig into the crankshaft with these splines right there. And I'm gonna be installing that and showing you how to do so today. Yeah, this doesn't mix well with the stock setup. <laughs> so with the cam phases removed and all, I just have it supported here by the solenoid so I can get a lot of play in this chain. We're just finishing up the front main seal right now, making sure everything is good. Beforehand, we changed everything timing wise besides the sprocket, new oil pump chain, a new oil pump sprocket, new timing chain guides, new oil pump chain, new timing chain guides and a new timing chain as well. Brand new. So right now we have to clean out the crank snub before installation as per instructions by VTT. Kind of funny to say. For this, we're just using a rag and some brake cleaner to clean it out. So what you're seeing right now is us trying to go ahead and finagle with that new timing chain and that new crank hub because it needs to be perfectly lined up. It cannot be any play during that portion where it wraps around the crank hub. These videos are sped up to from four to 6,000%. It did take us a long time. So please be patient and make sure it seats perfectly before going ahead and proceeding with the rest of your installation. Once it is perfectly around the crank hub, you can go ahead and start tightening it down a little bit to get ready to actually tighten down the bolt that holds the crank hub. Tighten these two to eight and a half Newton meters. We're just doing nine. And this one will be 20 Newton meters. This one up here in that annoying location will be nine newton meters each one of these oil pump bolts that's gonna be four newton meters and then 45 degrees afterwards that that and that this will be 20 newton meters 
and 45 degrees. I didn't have to remove that, so. Okay, now I'm ready to start tightening this with the motor down. I go ahead and got this special little timing tool, screw into the crank hub. I've gone, gone ahead and taken off the bolt. I'm gonna go ahead and tighten it down to 75 pound feet. Okay. All right, let me go ahead and check timing. So I'm just gonna spin the motor to top dead center again. Honestly, just gonna spin it completely first. Long good. Locked it on the OEM flywheel. See if the camshafts are locked in position as well. Back up the motor. Which fits perfectly. We are in time. Now we get to the hard part. All right, let me go ahead and set up this lock tool. I tighten down these Vanos bolts. It's gonna be 20 pound feet and 180 degrees. I'm gonna go ahead and take all this stuff, stuff off. Uh, I've already done the pressure test and everything. Just gonna tighten that one. Be really careful with this VTT hub because it is definitely not as long as the OEM one when it comes to like the depth of the holes where you put the bolts. This one got stuck inside of there because of how short it is. We can see right here with the threads. But we were able to get ours figured out. So just be careful with how deep you go in. We use that with our timing tool. And well, it's definitely not like the OEM one. So be forewarned if you're doing this project. All right, I'll just mark it like so here too for double reference point. That's a big boy. Is this VTT's torque spec or is this BMW? With <laughs> VTT's, but BMW does this too. I got this, bro. Bro, you were sitting on it and it wasn't going. I'm, I'm got this, bro. Okay, watch. It's nice. This is two person, bro. It's your whole weight. No, I still got some feet on the floor. Do not underestimate my power. It's not your power. It's just, you're running out of body weight, bro. VTT quality, VTT product on VTT product. This is their freaking spline lock with their crank bolt capture, which is quote unquote designed to be used together, right? Well, now we're making threads for this. So. Amazing piece of equipment, man. Torqued and In mind, all these have been started by hand. They're not cross threaded or anything. Yeah, I mean, this one's still got the, like there's still a gap under that. And it's tight. See, like the washer still is. At least it fell on the ground. Yeah, I was gonna say, at least it came all the way out that time. Take three, one more prime, just because I want to be safe. I spent way too much time on this motor. Last prime. All 
Okay, so I'm gonna tell you right off the bat that that was not a good start. Now we were throwing timing codes and I thought timing codes is impossible because I went through that motor at least three or four times to make sure the timing was perfect. And it was perfect. If you are doing this job, check this fuse. On N54 E90, such as myself, it was fuse number 37. This is a 30 amp fuse. Some of my Instagram followers have seen this post. This fuse is responsible for all the sensors that have anything to do with timing. And believe it or not, changing this fuse ended up in this following result. Thank you so much for watching. I just want to take this moment to thank everybody who's been following along with the channel. You guys are the MVPs. You're the reason I keep doing this. Don't get me wrong, these cars are great and all, but they take up a lot of time. And everything with them just has to be just perfect. And when little things go wrong, it can lead to catastrophe, such as slipping timing. But it feels so good when it's up and running. It's unlike anything else you've ever driven. And if you're one of those people that like modifying European cars, making them do stupid things like pushing 700 horsepower out of a stock block, you should totally like this video and subscribe to the channel because that's what I like doing. And get a sneak peek at the next project ish right there not really gonna say what it is yet but it has something to do with this thing not to mention there's another car outside right there that is going to start soon it's my daily so nothing really cool is happening to it but i think it's going to be pretty nice lots of projects coming up on this channel so again if you like european cars like and subscribe i can't wait to show you the kind of things i'm going to be doing to them here let me go ahead and give it another real sneak peek right there 